Bet Sports presents Benning Bites with Damon Benning. Benning Bites with Damon Benning. Another episode of Benning Bites. However, you get us, we appreciate you. Apple, Google, Spotify. Maybe it's just good old fashioned 590 KFOR in Lincoln after nine. Man, we appreciate you. We are working on that RRSS feed of just coffee and cream in the morning to make it even easier for you. So we appreciate you. Pretty spirited conversation yesterday. Well, about a couple of things. Conference scheduling. I wasn't going to beat that up, eight versus nine and, you know, round robin like you do in the Big 12 and things like that. But I, I will say this. It's kind of an interesting philosophy, right? If you're the SEC, when you're kind of, you're already making money hand over fist. You got the SEC network payouts are good what would be the advantage to playing another conference game right obviously you run the risk reward an extra conference game is another potential loss maybe um versus the revenue share of having another game in the inventory for your network right so you could pay let's say wofford or somebody you know uh a million six to come in and play on the non-con in November. Or you could make another four million for your conference and split it amongst your group. I don't know. What's the incentive? Another extra two million? Would it could it could you make that an extra two million per team per year? Does it matter when you're already making more money than the other conferences? I say yes. Because you don't want the scrutiny of doing things different than everybody else. But as long as you're continuing to put teams in the championship game, I just don't know what their incentive is. Even if philosophically I I disagree with it, which I do, right? But I do understand the business principle. Because how much money is too money, too much money? If you're already making more money than the next closest conference, which is the Big Ten, what would be the catalyst to add another conference game? I don't know. I didn't get too bent out of shape about it, but it did lead us into schedule talk, which you find folks know I love. Actually, not really. I almost never talk schedule. But considering I made it just about the first game in Minnesota, it was easy for me to talk about, right? Because there's this fear and this trepidation, and I understand, conference game, on the road. But remember, I mean, Minnesota's replacing their their leading um, passer, yardage-wise, their leading rusher. I think Jackson's back. Daniel Jackson is back, I believe, for Minnesota. That's wide receiver at 557. Uh, Sorry Marin is gone. Uh, their leading tackler. So, I mean, they, they, have, they have some work to do, right? A little bit of roster turnover. You're going to go with co-coordinators on offense. We know that, that Rossi and company do a really good job uh, defensively. So they should be okay. But just the kind of giving in to the opener, I don't know. Um, I haven't seen the early lines. I'm, I'm sh- I know they're out there. Uh, I would guess it's five or six, something like that. So the the perception is is that Minnesota should win that game. And I don't know. I, I think, you know, coming into it, and I'll know way more after fall camp. The only reason I'm really talking about this now is because of the importance of that first game. And I have to go back and forth in my mind because in my head I'm like, man, I've seen it before where we put all our eggs in one basket and – and it's ruined seasons, right? Colorado comes to mind. Uh, not playing a home opener. We blame the weather. And if we could have only gotten an opener in, that year wasn't good. Uh, we didn't beat Northwestern in Ireland. And we know what happened after that. So I get it, right? Oh, DB, don't paint this as one win, one loss. X, Y, and Z is going to happen. No, and I won't. Because it shouldn't be that way. You should be, you should stay in the moment. And so there's two things that I'm that I'm excited about. Number one, Coach Rule and his staff has talked about one game at a time, all off season, 
and I know you, you probably think it's coaching cliche, right? But when you when you do things that keep you in the moment real time, you practice staying in the moment. Whether situationally it's bringing one unit back on the field, letting another unit going in, go in, whether it's you try to create situations in which it's a one-time scenario, winner take all, then you flush it and you do it again. Like you can practice, you can get your mind to go places in staying in the moment that can build you for the long haul and not looking ahead. Just focus on what this is right now. And that can work to the, to the good and to the bad, right? So you don't get that game. You compartmentalize, you flush. You do get that game. You compartmentalize and you build for the next week. Because if you can get that non-con under control, which is when you really start to make a move in college football. If you want to look at when you think you can predict when Nebraska returns to national relevance as a top 25 program, you need to take care of your non-con. And, and that's what Nebraska needs to focus on. But I say all that to say, if you find a way to go up to Minnesota, you give yourself an extra couple of days prep for a Colorado team that will be coming off of opening with TCU, you can kind of put it together. But it's still the one game at a time. My whole thing in the discussion on yesterday's show, if you missed it on Coffee and Cream, is go back is a couple of things, right? You're coming off the huge, not huge, it was a good official visit weekend, right? A lot of momentum. And but people have to say yes at some point. It can't just be feel good. It's when you start to stack, you get an opener on a Thursday night, all eyes on you, right? Then you get some time off, a couple of days to prepare. Then you get the first game out of the gates on in September on that weekend of the 9th, and it's Colorado, and you know the buzz. It's Dion, prime time, prime time. It won't be in prime time, but it is prime time. That's going to command eyeballs. I know it's one at a time, but it's easy to see where you can start to make the magic happen. The first game is extremely important for those people that want to fall in love with the program and this coaching staff. That is fans, players, and recruits alike. You can't get two unless you get one, but if you get one, which I think they more than clearly can, it's when good things start to happen. It's another episode of Benning Bites.